Hello guys, welcome back to uh, another week in my life teaching hybrid. So this will be week three of us being in hybrid, I believe. Um, last week my student teacher was teaching full time, so I am back teaching some of the lessons as well. We're kind of splitting it. And then next week is her last week with us and she'll move into her SPED placement. So let's see, last week as a grade level, we sent out a survey to parents just to say like, how's hybrid learning been going so far? Any suggestions or things that could be better? And um, a lot of the feedback was really good, um, positive saying, you know, so far it's been a good experience. We're trying to do a lot of paper and pencil compared to last spring when we were distance learning. That was obviously most had to be like on like CSUN digital. So they appreciated that um, part of it. One, a lot of like our opportunities if they finish early have been websites that they could go on and a lot of them just said like it'd be nice to have some paper options so that's one thing we changed for this week i printed off just i did it all on pink paper that way they know pink is optional stuff and then the regular white papers the stuff that needs to come back so we added in some of those uh, paper based optional activities i just printed off some like comprehension passages and some practice math worksheets and stuff that they already had so um that'll be a good change but yeah otherwise we're gonna kind of keep going with the same format we've been doing the only other thing we're changing as far as like how we're sending stuff home is well in my class we're gonna do a paper checklist um i was posting a checklist on cs every day but a lot of parents want to just you know be able to make sure that they had all their work done so i figured this is going to be an easy way kids can physically check off what they need to do and this tells them like where so like says assignment read for 20 minutes where do i show my work that one they, we have a reading log uh for writing type your opinion writing where do i do it google docs uh review and subtract worksheet it's in your folder, worksheet in your folder. So it tells them exactly if they need to do it on a worksheet, if it's in a notebook, or if it's been online or on their computer. So hopefully this will help them stay a little bit more organized and make sure they get all their work done. Uh, my coworker, Casey, Casey Wood, she had a great idea. So I'm gonna show you what we did. Also, why do I always do like the awkward thumbs up? I do it in my Seesaw videos too. Okay, so there's been a few students who will come and they're missing one or two of the assignments. Um, not a huge deal, but we're gonna try to encourage them to be more responsible and make sure they have everything done in the days they're home. So this was an idea that she had, and we did it today, and I think it'll work well. Okay, on the wheel of names, you can, a lot of people use these as to like randomly select names, but we did it with prizes. Um, you can save these too, so I saved this one so it'll always be there. Random days, not every day, but random days we're gonna go, hey, if you had all your work, you get to spin the wheel. So when they spin it, They'll do it up in the smart board, but it'll spin and they'll get a reward. So this person would get a golden ticket, which is our school-wide um, incentive. So I just made this, oop, there we go. And they just close, the next person would get to go. I just made this very quickly, so I just threw in, I have a bunch of Jolly Ranchers right now, so I did, you know, three Jolly Ranchers, three golden tickets. Um, I threw in free time on a Chromebook, so um, I'm not sure when that would be. Maybe during like our morning time they could use their Chromebook when they normally can't. I did do like lunch in the classroom and then just like Tootsie Rolls. So I'll probably add stuff, but I just tried to rush this morning to add to it, but they were excited to get to spin the wheel today. Okay, today we read a article on Newzella about the Electoral College. That's really all, I just want my kids to know how the election works, because a lot of them hear their parents talking about it at home, and I just want them to know it's not a popular vote, just kind of how it works. So we read that article and then I kind of explained it here. And then Mr. Harms on TPT had this, and I'll link it. Um, it's just a game. So with a partner, you roll a die. Whoever gets the higher number, so I got a one, my partner would get to go. Whoever gets the highest number gets to pick a state that they want. So you probably would want to start with California. So that would you'd color that either red or blue, and then the next person would probably take Texas. Long story short, you're kind of going through and taking turns choosing states and writing down their electoral vote college, and the first one to 270 wins. So that was just a good way for the kids to realize how the electoral college works. And like I said, we're just going to kind of track it as the election goes on, because I just want them to know how the election works. I'm not going to get into the candidates or their platforms or anything like that. A lot of my kids were very passionate about what their parents say at home, so I don't need to do that. I don't want to get my opinion in there either, obviously. So when they asked me um, who I'm voting for, I do not tell them. I'll flip you around. So I obviously already voted. I'm not telling them who I voted for. Uh, if you're a teacher, you know that. We can't uh, you know, force our opinions or teach our opinions, which is fine, but I just, um, there's the awkward thumbs up again. So I just avoided, I'm gonna avoid 
getting into the candidates. I don't need to teach them about the candidates. I more so am just wanting them to know how the election process works. So that's what we're gonna focus on. All right, other than that, um, we're still working on subtraction this week. Our texts, like our read-alouds we're reading this week are nonfiction books. And for word work, we're getting into some spelling patterns. So that was kind of our day. And we also had to do our star testing through Renaissance. So we did our star reading today and we'll do our star math later this week. So it was a good Monday. Um, it was weird with the time change, but it was kind of nice having it be light out. I think I took a video of like the sunrise this morning. So that was cool. But I feel like it's gonna be dark here at like five and I'm gonna be ready for bed. So that's gonna be a struggle. Getting used to that. Anyways, thanks for hopping on and I will catch you tomorrow sometime. Hello guys, happy Tuesday. Um, not a whole lot to report here, because you know, same old as yesterday with hybrid stuff. Um, we had more good discussions about the election with it being actual election day. I feel like the kids kind of connected to it more because they heard their parents talking about it and making plans to go vote and talk about who they were voting for. So um, they, yeah, they had a lot of questions about the electoral college and about how all that works. So that was a good discussion today. And moving into tomorrow, I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do. We are reading The Wild Robot. And we're, if you've read this book, we're getting very close to the end. So the ship just went by and saw them having their bonfire, if you know what I'm talking about. Um, so tomorrow, what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about character traits and I traced Roz and Bright Bill. And I'm gonna use this as the example because on Friday, I want to, that was good, smooth. Um, on Friday, I wanna, record this book and since it's our full distance day we've read jabari jump so i want to read jabari tries and then i want them to be able to come up with some character traits for jabari so and use evidence from the book to support their thinking so we are going to do that tomorrow with the wild robot and i'm going to put this back up real quick I mean, that took like four seconds to put back up. These are magnetic, I put them up with command strips, but I always get some people who ask me for the link for these. I would not recommend them, they're 40 bucks. I got them for free, I like them, but they aren't deep and they're like shaped weird. Like a lot of times the books fall like that. You have to like position them like just right. So I've seen people make them with gutters. So if you're interested in having shelves like that to display your read alouds, just hang up gutters. That's what I've seen people do. All right, so anyways, um, we're gonna, Keep our map back there updated as results roll in for the election, and I'll keep let you know tomorrow afternoon what we did with the second day with our uh, kids here. So have a good night, enjoy the weather, because it's been awesome here, super nice here in Minnesota, and I'll see you in the morning. Good morning, happy Wednesday. Oop, zoom, 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 focus. Uh, I forgot my keys in my winter coat. I didn't wear it today, because it's actually nice here, so I had to get let in, so no awkward me filming myself walking into school and I'm locking the door. So here we are, two quick things. Uh, my parents are coming up this weekend and there's a greenhouse in town that my mom wanted me to buy her the snake plant from that she got one last year and she loved it. And when I went to go get it, they only had three left and I was like, hmm, maybe I'll get one for my classroom because I have these two little guys back here. Um, but I wanted something big and that doesn't need a lot of light and these don't, so I'll show you that. And I'm also gonna update our electoral college map. That is stressing me out. I never thought I'd be so invested and so worried about Pennsylvania. I've never thought about Pennsylvania so much before. And Ohio. Anyways, I'm gonna fill that in with the states that have been, um, yeah, whatever the word, it's too early for me to think, but you know what I mean. So I'm gonna do that. So here's my snake plant guy. I bought a planter for like 20 bucks, that standing planter that I'm gonna put him in. But isn't he cool? I don't know, I think he's cool. All right, I'm gonna update this.
All right, got that quickly updated with the states that have been counted so far. Um, again, we didn't do like a mock election or anything. We're just specifically talking about how the electoral college works and how the president is elected because I think that's a confusing thing. And I think a lot of kids just think that it's the popular vote. So I know they won't totally understand it, but I want them to have an idea of how it works and understand that it's not just a popular vote. All right, see you this afternoon. Check in, let you know what we did. Okay, bye. What is up? It is Wednesday afternoon. It was honestly a great day. Today was just so fun. Um, this group does a really good job of like, you can joke around and get them hyper. And then when it's time to work, they just get back in the zone right away. So it makes it fun to just kind of begin mess around a little bit and get them a little bit hyper. And they're like, all right, we gotta go do some math and then they're ready for it. So today we had to do our star math test. We did our star reading on um, Monday, so we did our star math test today. And then after that, we just kind of take more of a break since they work on that and whatever else. So kind of an incentive for them to try their best and take their time to have a little bit longer snack break after. So we did that. And then today we also um, started talking about kind of like expository writing and research writing. So I'll show you what we did for that and kind of go from there. All right, so I gave them this outline today and we are gonna start with them kind of researching a state. So I gave an example of Minnesota, because I told them they can't choose Minnesota because we're from here. And before that, we kind of talked about what are some things you would wanna know about a state that you haven't been to or haven't researched before. Um, so we came up with some ideas. So then we talked about how we could turn that into a topic sentence and then research to find examples of that. So I did a front and back so they could have up to four things they wanna research about the state, but I said that I want them to do at least three. So today what they did is they got their topic sentences written that they want to research and tomorrow they will actually do the research at home. I did uh, give them the link for Kittle, which is a search, en search, search engine. It's a little bit more kid friendly than like Google. So they'll look up their information for their state tomorrow um, using Kittle. This was like my really sloppy example. So we kind of did that to get the like, topic sentence. I showed them the examples I would come up with and then doing the topic sentence again on the back. It kind of ties in well, because we're reading expository informational books this week as well. So today they read Tornadoes, and they were very interested in that one. And yesterday they read the, or on Monday they read the Hottest, Coldest, Highest, Deepest, which they were also super, super into. So this ties in well with that, reading nonfiction books and doing some nonfiction research. Oh my gosh. For reading today, we did character traits, and we talked about Roz and Bright Bill from The Wild Robot. And then I also talked about point of view, and we kind of went through some of our picture books we've read and determined whether the point of view is first person or third person. And I did that because on Friday, I want them to do that with the book I am recording for them. So they did a pretty good job of identifying point of view, and then they did it in their own books today. And we'll keep talking about that as the year goes on, but um, yeah. So that was pretty much our day then. It was a quick day, it was a fun day they named our plant. So our plant's name is now Harold. And I think if we get another one or something similar, it's gonna be George, like Harold and George from Captain, Captain Underpants. So we love that. All right, so another day, another dollar. I'm headed home. See you in the morning. Hey, hi, hello, how's it going? Happy Thursday. Two quick things this morning. One, uh, I've been going to McDonald's for my iced coffee because $2, I've been way, way, way cheaper than when I had stopped at Caribou. Still addicted to Caribou, but uh, teacher budget, yeah, can't swing that one. So, two bucks, yep, yep. Uh, second thing, I we got new Chromebooks this year, the teacher ones, I can see it, how do I grab it? Here we go. Um, but it won't, like, reflect to or like air put screen share whatever you know what i'm trying to say to my desktop to my projector like i tried i can used to be able to do it with my ipads i can do it with my mac but my chromebook it will not do it our tech person came to look at it and the software we use to reflect our stuff we would have to upgrade but we aren't so long story short i want to be able to use my chromebook up towards the front of my room to model stuff for my students so i got this dongle thing that i'm hoping works so let's find out so I can plug this in back here, like I can unhook my HDMI cord and it goes in there, that's fine, whatever. But I wanna be able to use it up there. So that's why I was hoping I would be able to reflect it because then I could model stuff that we're doing on our Chromebooks for my students while I'm in the front of the room instead of doing it from behind them. Um, 
So last year I had my computer hooked into my document camera because you can switch between the two. So I'm gonna, I'm hoping this will plug in with this dongle and I can switch between the two from up at my document camera. So let's find out. Here is the moment of truth, document camera's on. All I did was VGA, this is to USB-C, the new USB port. I'm hoping when I plug it in. So it's plugged in back here, have the dongle, and then on my document camera I have, um, can it focus or no? I can go from document camera and you can do a computer input. So that's what I did. So I'm hoping when I plug this in, it's going to show up on there. Moment of truth, here we go, plugging this in. Really blurry, sorry. <gasps> gonna hit this button. Chromebook, is it gonna go? I don't know why it's so blurry, I'm not good at stuff. Uh, nope, that is my, not the right one. That is my computer. Let's try this again. Okay, this switched back to my desktop, so I'm gonna use this to switch back. Uh, why isn't it working? I thought this was gonna do it. All right, well that was anticlimactic. I thought that was gonna work and I was gonna be so pumped, but not today. I'll keep messing with it. Good times. All right, I'll check in with afternoon. See you, bye. Okay, sorry, I'm back. I'm not gonna be able to let this go. So I hooked this up with that same dongle thing back here to this box thing and it works just fine. So I need to mess around and get it to work to this document camera because I want to be able to flip it up front because this is in the back and I don't want to be tied back here with this. <sighs> I'm gonna mess with this and hopefully in this afternoon I'm pumped because I figured it out. If you're super techy and you know what I'm doing wrong, let me know. Good afternoon guys. Um, we are done with kids for the week. We have our distance learning day tomorrow. I just got done recording myself reading Jabari tries for the students to do tomorrow. And then they're gonna do um, character traits on him and also think about what point of view it was written in. So I just wrapped that up. The video is uploading to YouTube as an unlisted one so I can link you to Seesaw. Um, but I kind of made some progress from this morning, kind of, I'll show you. All right, long story short, I didn't get it to work from switching like that. But what I can do is just unplug this part if I can unplug it. I don't think I twisted that. And then I have to plug it into this every time. And then I can use my Chromebook up here, which is kind of annoying, but also it's fine. So long story short, why is it always so zoomed up like that? Like I don't get it. Okay, oh, kind of better. All right, um, long story short, it's kind of annoying. I wish it would, like I could just always have the adapter on there and then just plug it in and switch it over, but it doesn't take long to, um, Okay, quick. And it was nice today because when I was trying to show them the websites um, for their typing stuff they're gonna start, I could have it up front with them. So it's it's good. it's fine. It, it's gonna be great. But if you do have any ideas of anything I could try, like why the dot cam won't flip it over, that'd be awesome because that's definitely how I did it all last year. I don't know if it's because it's a laptop versus a, a desktop, but I don't know why that would matter. So if you know more than me, let me know, please. Uh, let's see. Otherwise, distance learning day tomorrow, we'll do our two live Google Meets. The kids will have their stuff. We get planning time. We PLC. Um, so I'll kind of fill you in on that. But for now, I am going to head on home. So have a great night and see you in the morning. Good morning, happy Friday. Um, it is our distance learning day, so we don't have kids in person. Uh, we will do our couple Google Meets. 
So we'll have one this morning at 8.15 and then we'll do one at um, 1.45 in the afternoon. And otherwise they just have their work sent home with them for the day. So what I want to accomplish today is get my week planned next week because I have to go back to teaching everything. It is my student teacher's last week and um, she'll probably hop around and observe some other classrooms and whatnot before she moves to her sped placement in our building. So um, I want to for sure get all that stuff planned and um, trying to think what else oh we have our plc this morning and then our special like our gym teachers and music teachers they're grilling for us this afternoon so it's gonna be outdoors and everything's gonna be um you know served safely and whatever else but um it's nice that they're doing that for us so we will eat lunch out there and it's supposed to be a beautiful day in minnesota so that's a good timing for it i don't know or, 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 whatever i don't know what i'm saying it's too early anyways I got my big old $2 McDonald's coffee. So I'm gonna start drinking that. Try to get some stuff planned here before that Google Meet. I, it's 7.30 right now, so I have like 45 minutes. Uh, when we're doing this morning Google, Google Meet when they're all home, today we'll kind of do our sharing from our morning meeting. And then every morning when they come to school, they've been writing down a word, just like those tier two vocabulary words that, and then I try to use them as much as possible, like doddle, immense, um, disheveled, just random words that we come across and read alouds, and then I'm like, ooh, I like that word. So I write it down and then they put it in their notebooks. So today we're gonna play, um, we call it Hot Seat. I love playing it in person, but it works um, virtually as well. So how it works in person is somebody sitting in a chair in front of your board and you write the, um, a word behind them and then the class is in front of them and they're giving them clues about what the word means. Not about like what it starts with, but like the meaning of the word. So how it works when we do it virtually is the student that I choose, they leave their microphone on and they turn away from their computer. I type a word into the chat. I could share my screen, but I feel like that just takes too much internet and our internet is unreliable. So I just type the word into the chat and then the kids raise their hand if they have a clue for that student. So if the word was um, irate, I would type irate into the chat. So the kids would raise their hand. Someone might say, uh, when you're really, 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 really angry and then if the student knows it's irate, then the student who gave the clue gets to be the one to turn around next. I choose a new word and we repeat that process. So we're gonna play that game this morning to review our vocab words. And then yesterday we finished The Wild Robot, my favorite book. And then obviously they wanted the second one because if you've read this book, you know how it ends. So we did start the second one yesterday. We only got a few chapters in. So this afternoon I will read some of The Wild Robot Escapes to them. And that'll be the, that'll be the week. So here we go. Let's see what we accomplish. All right, we made it through another week of hybrid. I am gonna get my stuff ready and get out of here. Today was, I love these work days, but they are long, just cause I don't know, being at school all day, it feels like an in-service day. I love that we can get prepped for the next week, but it still goes by a lot more slowly than a regular school day. Um, one awesome thing was our PE and music teachers grilled us lunch and it was, oh, I said that this morning. It was super nice out. So I um, went outside and we socially distanced outside, but we were able to just kind of sit in the grass and eat lunch and yeah, so that was awesome. Um, I got all my stuff printed for next week. I'm gonna switch some things up a tiny bit. So I'll show you that next week if it goes well. And other than that, it's my student teachers last week. Um, we got some little plans for that. Hopefully, Taylor, you're not watching this so you don't hear that, but um, I'll fill you in on that one next week as things happen. So thanks for tuning in, and I will see you next time.